Hello and welcome to Copper Dragon Games, where we talk about Dungeons and Dragons, usually virtual tabletop resources. Today we're getting back to our roots for the channel and talking about some Foundry add-ons, specifically the five add-ons that I believe every Dungeon Master should be using for their games. Now I've made an Essentials video in the past, but it's a little outdated now, and to be completely honest, when I did the first Essentials video, I got into some things that actually weren't that essential. They were pretty or they were cool, but they weren't really necessary to play the game. And in this video, most of these are not absolutely necessary, but they are simple, quick add-ons that you can add to your game that will save you tons of time and headaches as you're trying to move further and get your game set up and ready to roll. So let's get to it. Before we get too far in, I want to take a moment to stop and recognize the artists that we're using to showcase these add-ons. The map we're looking at here is from Heroic Maps. This video isn't technically sponsored by them, but they did provide these maps for free for me to use in my videos. So huge thank you to Joe and Sarah from Heroic Maps. And I get the opportunity to show off their awesome artwork. It's a great range, and if you want more, you can always go to their Patreon or over to DriveThruRPG and download more. So when you first get started with Foundry, I think the first module that everyone should add, no matter what, hands down, just absolutely necessary, is tidy UI game settings. The more established your campaign is, the less likely it is to be super helpful on a regular basis, but especially when you're getting started and getting used to what all your add-ons do and toggling settings on and off, it is a game changer. If you go over to module settings, you'll see that all of your modules are in this list with all of the different things that you can toggle on and off for each of those add-ons. And you can scroll down your list and try to find the one you want, but you can see each one takes up a different amount of space, they're organized differently. They have different types of settings that you can toggle on and off. Everything you need is there, but it can be difficult to find what you need, especially if you're mid-game and you need to change a setting on something that you realize mid-session just isn't working out the way you thought it would. When you're first getting started with Foundry or when you're first getting started with a campaign with new players, it is really likely that you will be coming back to this menu quite often to switch things on and off, to test out different setups, to see what works best with your DMing style, with your group's play style, with your player preferences and all that. And in that stage of your Foundry journey, Having this organized better than what comes out of the box can save you a ton of time. So the first thing I think every DM who's starting out with Foundry should install is Tidy UI. Once you have Tidy UI installed, you instead have this nice organized list of modules and each one is clickable and expandable so that you can find exactly what you need really quickly. For what it's worth, Tidy UI also gives you a couple of cool options at the top of the module management screen so that you can uncheck all of them at the same time or add all of your add-ons at the same time or even import or export lists of modules uh, depending on what type of session you're planning to run. I very rarely ever use these. I think Tidy UI is far better for the uh, organization piece that you can see on the settings screen, but it is a cool perk. The next module I think everybody should have installed is Dice Tray. Now, if you're coming over from Roll20, like I did and like many people are doing, because let's be real, Foundry is way better. If you're coming over from Roll20, you're probably accustomed to seeing some dice tools up on the left-hand side of the screen, where you can click and you get a little pop-out and you can tell the program to roll some dice. You can also type in the chat what you want the program to roll dice for in both systems, but I always found it really weird still find it really weird that Foundry doesn't have a native tool to visually see and just click on what dice you're going to be rolling. Dice tray is a really elegant solution to that problem and it adds some little clickable dice buttons just under your chat log. You can see them pop up right here. When you click on those dice it just adds those dice that you're going to roll. You can add uh, pluses or minuses to modify that roll, and as long as what you've specified that you're going to roll is a d20, you can also specify whether you want advantage or disadvantage on the roll. This module makes those instances where you just need somebody to roll a d6 or need somebody to roll a d20, and it's not on the character sheet somewhere. This saves a ton of time. Sometimes I want to roll a d20 and say, odds this happens, evens that happens. Or sometimes I have four players and I'll 
just roll a d4 to see which one gets targeted by a monster. Whatever the case may be, you'll run into times that you need to roll a die, and it's not attached to an ability score. It's not attached to a skill or a save or whatever, and you just need to throw a die out there, and this is a super easy way to do it. And you don't have to remember anything. It's just there. It's an awesome tool. And it will save you time and brain power when those situations come up in game. The next module that I believe every DM should add right away when they start using Foundry is Minimal UI. Now Foundry does a pretty good job by default not taking up space on your screen, but it can be improved. And I think one of the biggest things that we want with a virtual tabletop is to be able to see all the really cool uh, lighting effects and things popping up on the map and monsters and creatures and all that stuff. And the more menus and screens we have blocking the action, the worse off our game tends to feel. It's subtle, but you can definitely tell a difference. Minimal UI just reclaims even more space on your screen that you can use to show off your combat, show off your lighting effects, show off your cool tokens that you're using, whatever the case may be. Keeping the eyes on the action rather than the random screens and menus. Now, right now I don't have minimal UI enabled. Let me enable it really quick. And you can see while it may not feel like a huge difference, you do reclaim a fair amount of screen space. The links to all your maps, which used to take up a fair amount of screen space at the top, are now in more of a drop down menu style. So you can uh, make those go away when you don't want them. The tools on the left hand side shrink dramatically and the menus at the bottom of the screen where you find your like macros and things that you've got saved are at the bottom and they go away unless you want to uh, maximize them and keep them out it also gives you a ton of ways that you can further customize how your different menus and sidebars and toolbars function. You can change colors and shadows and uh, shadow strength and opacity. And you can also change things like whether or not that scene drop down starts collapsed or starts expanded. So it not only gives you back a lot of space, but it also lets you further customize how you're going to use the space uh, that you just reclaimed. This might not sound like a very big deal or something that you would want to prioritize at the very beginning of your experience with Foundry, but one of the things that I really emphasize when I'm giving advice about how to use Foundry is that you seek to avoid changing things on the player facing side as often as possible. Foundry is so customizable, it can be very easy and very tempting to change the way the game works on a regular basis, and every time you do that, the players have to learn uh, a different place to look for things, a different way of interacting with Foundry itself, and I really think that those changes should be avoided as much as possible. Think about when your favorite operating system changes and you're having to learn uh, new nuances of where things are and what icons look like now and things of that sort. It's typically not a deal breaker. You're probably going to keep using that operating system, but those are the types of small things that your players will have to relearn more than likely in session that will take away from your actual game time. The next thing you're definitely going to want is some form of pinging module. Now there are several that do this and I think the two best are either pings or PNP pointers and pings I think is what it's called. I personally prefer pings just because it's simpler, but if you're in the market for a pointer with ping capabilities that are more customizable, PNP is probably the better choice. Now having one or the other of these modules is really important because by default, your players can see where your mouse is in Foundry. Going in and turning off that setting is probably one of the first things you'll want to do as a DM, just to make sure your players can't see where your mouse is at all times. This may not feel like a big deal right now, because you might be thinking, if players can see where my mouse is, why don't I just move my mouse to what I want to emphasize and bring their attention to, and they'll know where to go. Well, that's great until you're running, like, say, an invisible creature, or you're unlocking things, or maybe you're uh, dragging and dropping monsters into a room that they haven't seen yet. They may not be able to see what you're doing with it, but there's a metagame aspect of if they can see where your mouse is, they might be picking up on some clues about what you're doing and what's coming next, and that influences play. So you want to turn that setting off and get your pinging module so that when you don't want them to know what you're doing, they can't see your mouse at all. When you do want to draw their attention somewhere, you can left click on that location and a little pop-up will arise and they will have their attention drawn to that location. Easy peasy. 
The next thing you're going to want to add is some way to streamline your dice rolls. Now, I'm not a huge fan of automating everything, but there are times that being able to click once and have the computer do like four or five different things for you without you having to give additional input can be extremely important when you're thinking of time saved in game. And to be completely honest, if you're looking at the way Foundry does things by default, it can be a little bit clunky. Sometimes you need like four or five clicks just to resolve an attack, not to mention uh, then going over and reducing the monster's hit points by X amount or whatever. It doesn't take up a ton of time, but if you multiply that by the number of attacks that your players and monsters take, it can be extraordinarily slow. So there are three big add-ons that people often use to overcome this issue with Foundry and one of them is MIDI QOL. The reason I don't use it is because it assumes that when you click a button that you are ready for everything that should happen after you click that button to just go ahead and be automated in the game and truly that is not my normal experience playing the game. There are tons of times when I will have a player make a roll, and then after they've made the roll, remember, they should have had advantage. And if you're running MIDI, then that becomes an issue because you've made the roll, and everything that would have transpired because of that roll has already happened. The roll has been made, the roll has been checked against the monster's armor class. The damage has already been taken off the monster's hit points. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole shebang is already done. And then I'm left in a situation where I'm trying to backtrack too much. Now, what I use instead is a combination of better rolls and Beyond 20. Beyond 20 is a Chrome or Firefox extension that you can add that will let you roll directly from D&D Beyond into Foundry and it's pretty cool and convenient and I use that for the player side of things. All of their character management is done in D&D Beyond completely outside of Foundry and there's no import export that I have to deal with. It is completely done on D&D Beyond and then mid-session all they do is click on their character sheet in D&D Beyond and it rolls into Foundry. Now that is really useful to me because I have invested in resources on D&D Beyond. I know there are plenty out there who don't like the idea of paying for digital resources or who already have books and don't want to pay extra for something that they already have in a physical format. I totally get it. Uh, but for me, that is just so convenient that it's worth the money uh, to make that investment. For anybody who doesn't like D&D Beyond, my suggestion would be to use Better Rolls. Now, Better Rolls is how I run uh, the monsters in my campaigns. Better Rolls gives you the opportunity to use the double roll, which is what I prefer uh, for my monsters and my players to make. You can get the setting in Beyond 20 as well, but you can set it up for dual rolls, and whenever an attack is rolled, it automatically rolls two dice. If you have advantage, you take the higher. If you don't have advantage, you take the lower. And if it's just a straight roll, you take the first one. So if you're rolling, and then you realize after you've made the roll, oh, that was supposed to have advantage, well, you don't have to roll again. You you already have the second die roll and you can default and switch over to that. For example, let me click on this cultist and attack with the scimitar. So I have two rolls here, two attack rolls. If I made the roll, if I clicked the button and attacked, and I realized after the fact that this attack was supposed to have advantage, then I would just take the higher of these two rolls, which in this case is the 21. If I had disadvantage, I would take the lower of the two rolls, which is 10, and if nothing changed and it was just a regular attack, I'd just go with the first roll that was up there, the 21. you got the damage that's already rolled down here, and each of these little buttons that pops up beside the damage on that little bar is the option to go ahead and apply that damage to whatever token is selected. So if I wanted to click on the first one, I could apply healing. The plus button lets me roll and add crit damage if for some reason there's an effect that turned this into a crit even though the dice didn't reflect that. I can apply full damage or half damage or quarter damage to the target or I could apply double damage to the target if it's vulnerable. To be honest though, I typically just right click and hit minus four and watch the damage change on its own. That's just a thing. Either way, this is far more convenient than if you have better rolls turned off and you make that attack. You gotta click once to decide uh, which attack you're using, then again for the attack, then again to 
decide whether it's a normal advantage or disadvantage. Then again, to click damage and specify whether it's a normal or a critical hit. And then at the end of the road, you've clicked one, two, three, four, five, five times. And you're just now finding out how much damage you did. And then you don't even have the little uh, quick buttons. You have to go to this method, which I use more often than anything. But without better rolls, I don't even have the opportunity to use those convenient little buttons that pop up on the damage bar. Now, all of these have their pros and cons, but uh, you definitely want one of them when you're first starting out. If you enjoyed this video and found some value in it, I want to encourage you to check out our other videos and playlists, which you can find right here. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can follow along. And if you want to make sure you never miss anything, click that notification bell before you go as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.